Dragon Dogma 2 releases very soon and I'm very excited for it. So to have a better understanding of the series, I have to play and 100% the original game. Instead of going straight into the character customization screen like other games, we are forced to play as a random nobody. Or so I thought. Anyways, we have to dodge the dragon's flame breath, defeat his evil army, and kill a chimera, the game's tutorial boss. After slashing at his butt for 2 minutes straight, we finally got him into his last HP bar, which he then decided to stop messing around and locked in. Oh. I'm asleep. Okay. God damn. That's a grab. God damn. A minute of chipping away the ass later, and we finally killed the beast. Yep, there you go. Ooh. We already did. Come on. You, you have like 100 ping. Our factory didn't last very long as the dragon stepped in and offered us an impossible choice. The screen gradually goes black and I have officially completed the prologue. I was then transferred to the character creation screen in which I spent quite some time meticulously designing my character. Is that a child? What the fuck? Oh my goodness, is that Amy Schumer? 45 minutes later, we finalized our elf girl waifu and actually started to play the game. After getting around the village and getting used to the locals, the dragon conveniently found us. I was overconfident in doing a level 1 no hit run. As the fights dragged on, I realized I was not built for this. I went from nah, outwin, to getting my butt slapped across the beach. If that seawater isn't salty for me, the dragon added more sodium chloride to the wound by literally stealing my heart. To make things worse, he swallowed its whole no gag reflex as we watched on. Flawless victory. Oh, okay. We do look fine though, I'm not gonna lie. Grown ass man froths over a video game character. The dragon decided it was enough staring and told us to. I chose Fighter for my first playthrough and left Cassandra's for the encampment. While on my very way there, I helped out a traveling merchant, which unknown to me, is very important for a side quest. Once I arrived, I heard a voice beckoning to me, so I followed. The source is from a riftstone, and it requests us to show our strength as an arisen. Since I have no idea what he's talking about, I decided to go explore around. Coincidence or not, we must repel the local invasion with an imposing cyclops as the spearhead. This encounter taught me that mounting the monster continuously drains your stamina and you have to make them count. Eventually he goes down after I continuously chipped away at his feet. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Yeah, damn! That's a level 3 guy at Shut up, bitch! Don't worry about the hooded figure, you'll see more about him later on. We then return to the Riftstone to create our own main poem. I just found a Guts build and made him into a fighter for now. After that, we were told to talk with the Lady of Command, Mercedes. Damn, she's hot. She was even kind enough to offer a place to rest, and what am I, a person to say no to a nice lady? The next day. My sleep was unexpectedly ruined by an imposing hydra. Although it looked intimidating at first, you can just climb up its neck and spam left click to cut off its neck. Overall, a much challenging fight than the Cyclops, with a stronger emphasis on stamina management. I thought I had entered phase 2, but the pussy just Bye, ran away. Mercedes then suggested giving the head to the Duke for us to build up our own reputation. I I agreed to join her on an ox cart escort mission because I like hot women, and by doing so earned the approval of the enlistment corps. I later regretted that decision as the ox moved way slower than my usual walking speed and made the mission way longer than it should have. I resorted to kicking the animal to speed things up. After resting for the entire night, I was greeted by a black man called Mason. He will be essential for some side quests in 
in the future. I then hired a pawn from within the Riftstone, earning myself the Foreign Recruit achievement. At that point, I'm just focusing on side quests and exploration. The main reason is to chip away the hero achievement, which requires successful completion of all main and side quests. After a while, I stumbled across a cave opening, which led into Dripstone Cave, earning myself another achievement. After casually exploring the area inside, I found my quarry, Saurians. These beasts take next to no damage at the front, but are extra vulnerable once you sever the tail. After eliminating the Saurians, I mistakenly assumed my lantern was out of oil, so I filled it up, earning the Artesian huh? achievement. Okay. I also did a side quest where I have to catch a thief at night time, but it was easier said than done. Stop right there, criminal scum! Me, son. Fast as fuck, boy. Still fast as fuck, boy. Come get sir. <laughs> I will never emotionally recover from this. All right, let's do this one last time. I got you, hands, man. Ooh, desk jump, nice. Ooh, that was lucky as shit. I then used the money earned from the side quest to get myself the two handler and changed my vocation to a warrior since I like great swords. Nice. After that, I resumed the main quest line to find the pawn guild, which is just a few feet away from where I rested. Upon arrival, we meet the head pawn called Barnaby, who then assigned us to investigate the Everfall. Fuck no, baby! I found a father grieving over his dead son. He needs some milk! Reviving the dead needs a wake stone from three wake stone shards, and he just gave us one, so we have to grab the other two. As I have acquired two wake stone shards already. I only need one more from Fornifo, who is also required for up to four possible side quests. But there's only one problem in which many of you guys will relate. If you're a broke boy, just say so. Well, guess I have to do more side quests. 9-11, that's- If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. Where was I again? Ah yes, back to doing more side quests. Eventually, I accumulated more than double the amounts required to buy the Wigstone shard. Nice! After checking out with the old geezer, I accidentally explored 50 locations, which gave me the achievements by surprise. Oh. With a functional wigstone in our inventory, we can finally revive his dead son. I was not done with Fornifo, as I'll have to babysit his daughter for a day to repay all my debts. And this side quest made me hate children. What? She then challenged me to a game of hide and seek, which I learned very well from my father, who has been the undisputed champion for almost 20 years. And guess where she chose her hiding spot? Oh, I was actually coming out here to pick up a cupcake. Ultimately, the kid vouched for us and Fornifo was pleased. For our troubles, we are rewarded with the Golden Idol, which allows us a 30% discount from all merchants. Yes! 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 After getting the forgery achievement and changing my pawn's vocation to a support mage, finally we progressed through the main quest line and explored the effort 4 which I forgot to record 80% of the footage. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Basically, what I did was I went to the bottom of the FF4, grabbed the port crystal, but then a tentacle monster spawned in and we have to escape. We reported our findings to Barnaby, and just in time for the Duke to acknowledge our heroic actions, thus approving us to join the Worm Hunt quest. Nice! Since I've completed the Chasing Shadows side quest, I can now visit Madeline who has recently opened shop. I then did my Worm Hunt quest by first finding and then consulting with the Dragonforged, who can be seen only by the Arisen. My next task is to spy on the Cult Salvation. The espionage didn't last very long as we were spotted by the cult leader, who was a very OG hater as he was there to summon the Cyclops to attack the encampment at the very beginning. I don't know why he has so much beef with me, but now is not the time to get answers as we will have to fight a bunch of undead warriors he summoned right beneath our feet. The cutscene hyped them up as major threats, but other than the annoying grab, they are very easy to manage. Although the leader escaped, Mason clutched as he apprehended one of the cult members. You know how I deal with cultist members, right? Especially the racist ones. 
Our third task is to check on two brothers. One of them has ventured inside alone, hoping to find five tablets. Although we found the brother's remains and avenged his killer. Oh my god. I fulfilled his objective by bringing five tablets to the brother. Our fourth task is to go to the Shadow Fort through the ancient quarry. I explored the quarry in which I encountered and killed three ferocious ogres. I'm starting to realize I hired some overpowered pawns. Eventually I arrived and I have to drive off the goblin forces that are occupying there. To do that I have to defeat their alpha who is residing at the top of the fortress. Eventually I stumbled across his lair and the fight was pretty underwhelming. He put all his stats in charisma and leadership instead of strength, intelligence or magic. Realizing he got outclassed, the goblin leader ran away with his tail tucked between his legs while leaving the shadow fort all to ourselves to reclaim. Before leaving for Grand Soren, I noticed a hole protruding from the ground. It led to a cave structure so I decided to take a look, which gave me another achievement related to caves. After that we turned in all worm hunt quests and got rewarded handsomely. The top guard Sir Maximilian offered us to hear the duke's directive but now is not the time. For I'll have to escort Adario from Cassandras to the Shadow Fort to get the escort achievement. And remember the traveling merchant we saved very early on? His name is Wenard and after buying several items from him, he further asks us for a favor to look for six journal entries of his long lost father. At least we have something in common. Those six entries are scattered all around the world and I already got four of them so far. I would worry about the last two journals later as it's time to hear the duke's directive. Once I left the duke's court, I saw a feminine figure tending to her plants. By exhausting her dialogue, you can raise her affinity to the max and keep her around for several side quests. Right before I left the castle, I was confronted by Alduas, who will be responsible for managing and giving out main quests. I accepted two quests from Alduas and one super secret mission from Mirabelle on behalf of the princess. I explored the upper levels of the castle and visited my 100th location. The first quest for Alduas is to prove whether Fonfo is deemed guilty or innocent from tax evasion. I decided to prove his innocence, so I collected more than enough documents to clear his name. I also brought an eyewitness to testify in favor of Fonfo. For our next quest, we will have to slay a griffin. Although the pawn squad and I put up a valiant effort, the griffin decided to flee from the battlefield to lick its wounds. Don't mind me, I'ma just grab my stuff and leave. Excuse me, please. I'll chase the griffin later, but for the meantime, I met up with Mirabelle to infiltrate the princess's headquarters. I thought I was gonna become a cuck at first, but then the duke just became possessed out of nowhere and started strangling the princess. Since domestic violence isn't cool and all, I decided to intervene. To repay me for standing up to women's rights, the princess sent me to prison. Women. <laughs> hey yo, I ain't scared, you know? I ain't scared. I'm just interested in young- What did he say? She then gave us a bunch of keys to escape, and right after I busted myself out of prison, I got the affinity and beyond achievement. I attended the court hearing of Fornifo, and turns out, unsurprisingly, he was found innocent. For now, we have some extra time to kill, so I grinded away some achievements by hiring NPC pawns, and ventured inside Soul Flayer Canyon, grabbed the fifth journal entry, collected the letter at the bottom, and finally turned in the conspirators' side quest. Before I could start the witch hunt side quest, a golem stood in my way. They are a huge step up from regular mini bosses and they hit so hard. Oh my god, the head, the damage, the damage, oh my god, the damage. Please, please, oh my god, oh my god, W damaging the glowing discs scattered across the golem's body is the only way to deal damage. If you're lucky, you can also topple it. With a near-death experience, the pawn squad and I pulled out a clean win. Yes!
After killing the golem, we soon find out that the witch has passed away a very very long time and her pawn, Celine, will inherit her legacy and her magic. Once I'm done with Celine, I dressed up my main pawn with a gown and dress, as I'll have to accept a quest from the female bandits group, who don't take kindly to male visitors. For our task, we'll have to feed the cyclops belonging to the female bandits leader, and this task is easier said than done. No, you, you are mistaking me for food. Man, the first time was so nice, I had to do it twice. Dude, dude, the goblin is down there, you fucking read. This cyclops seriously needs glasses, but eventually... Thank the lord, thank the lord. The leader saw my tenacity and awarded me a badge of loyalty saying that I can come over to the sleepover. I explored around the female bandit's base and got myself the final journal entry. Before I could hand them to Renard, I finally tracked down the griffin that escaped earlier. I traveled all across the map just to pack him up in under two minutes. I reported the griffin's death to our doers and delivered all journal entries to Renard. After that, I felt like I'm missing out on some achievements, so I gifted everyone skulls until I got the philanthropist trophy. As I don't have any side quests to do, our doers directed us to inquire about the Worm King ring robbery and ate Sir Mercedes in a scouting mission. The first quest was pretty easy. The thief's name was Salomat and he's a decent sorcerer. However, just like the average mage in video games, they are very squishy. Before he dies to fall damage, the ring conveniently slipped out of his finger. I guess he used too much lotion and now the post nut clarity hit him too hard. After that, I investigated what Mercedes has been up to and found out that Salvation has been attacking the wind buff tower. I joined up with Mercedes before tackling the knight's champion, who is the second in command of Salvation. If you haven't done the chase Shadows mission with the supply and demand side quest, you wouldn't be surprised by the face reveal. Between a sexy lady and a rat, I did not hesitate to decide who lives and who dies. Right after turning in those two quests, I was tasked to intercept a wounded soldier's message. Turns out the soldier's message was to safeguard Grand Soren, but now it's too late, as Salvation had already breached the city's defenses with cockatrices. These Fiends inflict petrification, a debilitation that can one-shot anyone that does not have the cure for it. After tanking several arcs of deliverances, the cockatrices licked their wounds and flew away. It's safe to assume that the power of petrification cannot best a trusty greatsword. The Duke has heard of our remarkable bravery and ordered us to follow him to the treasure room. The thing is, he walks just as fast as my 80-year-old grandma with dementia. But the rewards are very worth the wait. Money! 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 However, halfway during looting was the Duke notified of rampant salvation activity at Great War. I was given the Duke's commendation to put an end to salvation. But before that, I have learned from Mirabelle that the Duke has taken the princess prisoner. I'll have to disguise as one of the guards to enter the maximum security prison. After a while of exploring the dungeon, I finally stumbled upon the princess's cell and the both of us are very overjoyed to seeing each other again in fact the both of us got a little bit too excited if you know what i mean i guess the post nut clarity hits me extra hard today as busting her out of the prison is very tricky it also doesn't help that her hp bar is as short as the time i lasted in bed <laughs> To make things worse, I have to carry her when she's tired, and the bridges mm. collapse when there are too many people standing on top of it. I guess no. that's a good security measure. But just as the princess was to die from her injuries, the pawn squad came in clutch and healed her majesty back to full health. Eventually, we escaped prison and reunited the princess with Mirabelle. Although we truly love each other, the princess must depart to her homeland for safety reasons. After that, I annihilated Salvation's armies, but I was too late to stop the cult's leader from summoning the dragon. However, no bad deed ever goes unpunished. 
even with all the side quests I've done, the dragon still views us as not worthy of killing him. Disappointed, he rescheduled our rematch and left us alone. At that point, Salvation's reign had officially ended. To prepare for the dragon boss fight, I learned all skills for warrior and obtained anti-dragon equipment from the dragon forged. I arrived at the scheduled venue in time, but the dragon decided to make it personal by holding my dear princess hostage. And he forced me to choose between slaying the dragon or save your own skin and rule over the world but at the cost of my beloved. There are two endings for this scenario so I chose the bad one first and ruled over Grand Soren with an iron fist. At least I got an achievement for that. With that out of the way I went for the good ending and challenged the dragon. At least the princess knew the concepts of not fucking around and fighting out and dipped instantly. The dragon boss fight has multiple stages. For the first stage you have to avoid getting trampled and roasted by the dragon. The second phase is some excessive cardio while watching for the dragon's aerial assaults. Until we shoot him down with an artillery piece installed at the top of our destination. This course of action has forced him to decrease altitude so we can safely grapple onto its tail to inch towards the heart and deal a devastating blow to it. This disables the dragon's flying and grounds it for good. Finally, the duel between man and dragon can begin. Gotcha, bitch! It's over, Anakin! I have the high ground! You underestimate my power! Blow that piece of junk! Oh! Get fucked! Get fucked! Stop my shit! Let him cook! Let him cook now! Let him cook! That was a whole HP bar. He's almost dead. He's almost dead. Whoa, get fucked. Safi Jiva has been slain. At last, I have regained my heart. The dragon vanquished and reduced to dust. Dragon forged all my equipment, play rock, paper, scissors with the princess, but everything has a price. The clear blue skies are now clouded with miasma and dust. Also, a devastating earthquake hit half of Grand Soren. The dragon's death brought about severe consequences, especially towards the duke. As he had taken on the dragon's bargain, the dragon's death meant he regained his heart and accelerated centuries worth of aging. He did feel salty about losing the offer, so I put an end to his reign. Bye bye. <laughs> Unfortunately, that means we are charged with high treason and every guard in the vicinity will charge at me. Eventually, the king's army was too much for me and I had nowhere to run. I had no choice but to jump into the gaping hole that engulfed half of Grand Soren. I landed on a cliff which is suspicious located at the bottom of the world. I heard a voice beckoning to me and I'm surprised to see a person standing right behind me. The pawn's name is Quince and she asked us a favor that her deceased master cannot complete, which is to get the 20 wick stones. Well, guess I'll be stuck in the ever 4 for a while. Before I can grind those 20 wick stones, I need to grab some free achievements and a Hydra's death is required for one of them, which can hit pretty hard. Although it can regenerate its cut off head, but it cannot regenerate its health. We can also get another achievement for killing all three dragon subspecies. My first target is the Drake, which is just a smaller version of the talking dragon. For a fire-breathing dragon, he spams his grabs a lot, but all in all, it's a pretty moderate fight. The next target is a Wyvern. It's the more trickier subspecies to kill, as its heart is located at the top and it flies away a lot. However, there is nothing a bow and arrow cannot Bam. fix. This game is biased Bam. towards ranged vocations and you'll see why later. After killing the wyvern, the last member of the dragon subspecies stands in my way, a worm. The amount of spell spamming it does is almost akin to sorcerers in Elden Ring, but nothing ever stands in the way of poise and nice. a great sword. After completing dragon genocide, I completed 50 notice board quests. Finally, I can begin exploring the Everfall. The first doorway I entered led to the Chamber of Confusion. Inside, there were pawns wandering about 
world and no masters. And the evil eye next door might explain their master's disappearances. This guy can cast a shield that is impervious to any forms of offense. You can circle around its invulnerability by attacking its multiple tentacles that inflict elemental damage. If all its tentacles are cut off, it will stagger momentarily. That stagger became a topple once enough damage has been dealt to the center eye. Oh, get fucked! Oh, fucking delicious. There you go. Sheesh. Weak stones can be obtained by killing enemies and in treasure chests throughout all 12 chambers. However, after visiting the first 5 chambers, I realized the process was too slow and decided to challenge the Earth Dragon as it drops 20 weak stones upon its death. This fight is by far the worst in this game, as you can only damage him through attacking purple nodes scattered across his body. If the Earth Dragon receives more than enough damage to the purple hearts, it will go down for a generous amount of time, allowing access to hearts that are just out of reach. The hearts on the legs and stomach are pretty manageable, while the tail is very annoying to get to as it conveniently moves away from me when the dragon does anything. Well, I resorted to doggy style to strike at the tail. When the dragon's down, I used the opportunity to cling on its neck to attack one of the last remaining hearts. And my cry I was fuming by the time I got to his wings. Not only do they make pure red vocations jump like dumbasses in this matchup, there's also a chance for you to miss your great sword's wings. Hit your shots, kid. <laughs> the best opportunity for DPS is when one of your pawns get grabbed. Come on. Come on. No! Yes! 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 Get fucked! Get fucked! Get fucked! Get fucked! Get fucked! Suck my nuts! Jesus Christ! Although I spent 4 hours on this boss, it was well worth it. Not only did I get 20 wake stones, I also got the Heaven's Key Daggers, which is one of the best magic daggers pre-DLC. I then presented the 20 wake stones to Quince as she requested. These stones can somehow move on their own, and together they formed a portal at the bottom of the F4. Naturally, I jumped down through the portal and found myself trapped in another plane of existence. In fact, the creator of this universe lives here too, and for some reason challenged me to a 1v1. I let him absolutely destroy me. Then I was transformed into a dragon, which means that the dragon we've slain was also an arisen that failed to kill the creator. After testing my physical strength, the creator put my mental fortitude to the test by offering me two choices, either relieve the moment when things were normal, or replace him as the new creator. Well, I opted for the easy way out and lived my final days as a humble villager in Cassandras. At this point, I've achieved all bad endings. It was time to put an end to his mind games. When he unmasked himself, I was in shock. He's the exact same dude we played as in the prologue. I was not expecting that. We summoned our own main pawn to begin the world's final duel, which didn't last very long. Oh, Naturally, he yielded and presented us the God's Bane Blade to finish him off. We did exactly as he asked, and took his place as the new creator. I soon got tired of playing God and decided to end my own life. My main pawn and I fell out of the sky, then some crazy shit happened, and for some reason my body is being possessed by my main pawn. Overall, it's the strangest ending I've experienced in a video game. I then started New Game Plus in hard mode. This time, I decided to play as a Strider. I used the barrel glitch on Bitter Black Isle to grab myself the dragon's iron shot bow and the trophy jacket. I then wasted no time in getting 3,000 total kills, accumulated 10 million dollars thanks to notice board quests, bought a total of 350 pieces of armor and weapons thanks to the golden idol, and eventually I tracked down and completed all side quests I have missed in my first run. Before starting the DLC, I granted 
a bunch of earth dragons to get to level 100. Which, my dumbass forgot to record again. Idiot. Finally, I can start my Bitter Black Isle playthrough. And yeah, this part makes the game really hard. Sit down, big bro! This is a Gore Cyclops. They are obviously harder than the normal Cyclops counterpart. What the fuck? Although it took me 14 minutes just to kill my first one, I was rewarded with a bitter black level 2 weapon. I purified it and got myself the Hambate daggers, though I would have preferred the Sapphire daggers or the Dragon's Tempest bow. While I was exploring the labyrinth, I came face to face or rather eye to eye with my first major boss. The purple meat ball can instantly blind you, teleport its tentacles to attack you from afar, and even charge up an attack. That's one shot. You. Unless you're not a dumbass like me and can slice off the tentacles before it releases the nuke. After consuming a wake stone, I was back into the fight and forcefully inserted 15 arrows inside his eye socket. Defeating the gaze will unlock an entirely new region featuring new and hard enemies like the executioner, man eaters that live in chests, large wolves called Garm that will make you break your controller, mouse, or keyboard, cursed dragons which are a very good source for rift crystal farming and dragon forging gear. Last but not least, elder ogres, which their taste in their prey seems a little bit questionable. Why are you gay? What did you say? And our race. Eventually, I stumbled deeper into the labyrinth and came face to face with the Dark Bishop and his pet cursed dragon. When they fused with each other and the Bishop Dragon combo starts casting spells, especially High Maelstrom, be ready for a world of hurt. Yep, I'm still getting stunned up. However, once you fully deplete the dragon's HP, the priest will exit the dragon and be toppled for quite some time. You must capitalize on this moment by dishing out huge amounts of DPS, or you have more chances of dying to the dragon's bullshit magic. After a long and exhausting battle, I barely dragged the priest to hell with only one pawn remaining. Come on. Yes! Get fucked! Defeating the priest unlocks the final levels of Bitter Black Isle. And unlike the first two instances, I was not ready for the final boss, Damien. How did he grab me? Okay, I'm fucking dead now. I can't fucking see shit. Of course. Oh my Christ, this boss is a fucking tank. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. However, I was lucky I didn't get through Damien as death, an optional boss with the most XP dropped in the game. We'll have a 100% spawn rate in the gutter of misery, which means I can get easy levels and become overpowered. I changed my vocation to a magic archer, acquired all the trophy set armor pieces, farmed level 2 weapons until I got the dragon's tempest magic bow, yes, and spammed ricochet hunter on the walls in the gutter of misery until death is dead. Skill issue! Skill issue! I pretty much farmed death for an hour until I got max level. With better equipment and more optimized augments, I challenged Damien once again. With 4 magic rebalances active, I'm dishing out way more DPS than the Strider class, and maintain that DPS while he does the ground vortex move. With a few close calls, I was able to defeat the hardest boss okay. in this game. Nice. I looted the spoils of war on his corpse, and was told in that Directly that I'll have to complete Bitter Black Isle a second time, which has more harder enemies and producing more unfair situations like getting stunlocked by multiple executioners. Eventually, I arrived at my final destination and defeating Damien once again. I expected a second phase, but I was caught off guard when the dragon's head popped out of his chest. With two final bosses mashed up together, this would be a great fight, right? Wrong. Dad. Apart from getting new invisible claws attacks. 60% of the fight is just him flying around aimlessly in the arena. Are you okay? Are you okay? Is my game glitched or what? Is he supposed to be this easy? I don't know what I'm doing! I'm going to die! What? That's it? With Damien truly dead, I acquired nice. way better rewards. And after pulling four Dominion Claws in a row, it felt great when I finally got my hands on the Black Wing Bow. Yes! I was even more ecstatic when I pulled the frame rate daggers. Yes! Eventually, my demands were satisfied. Please give me the shot, bro.
After countless hours of farming on Bitter Black Isle, I hired a total of 7 T pawns to get to Captain Achievement. Nice. I then stabbed myself and officially completed New Game Plus on Hard Mode difficulty. I had only one thing left to do, that is to complete speedrun mode, which you have to rush through the tutorial, rush through the main story quests, kill the dragon as fast as possible. Here's all, kid. It was ever your own feet. <coughs> I mean kill the dragon as fast as possible and step yourself for the third time or in one sitting Alright, all achievements complete. If you have sticked around till the end of this video, I really appreciate it. I would also be more grateful if you liked the video and subscribed to help this channel grow. And that's all I gotta say. Bye bye.